Architecture is predominantly a visual art form, so how on earth could you possibly want to read books about it? Well, I'm going to recommend a few that I've personally really enjoyed reading, and in doing so, hopefully answer that question. For almost as long as we've been building, there's been writing published trying to define and redefine the ways in which we should build. If you're an architect in Renaissance Italy, you really had to read, and there were quite clear and important notions of style. Today, that's much less the case. There's certainly no definitive guide to design that's shoved down your throat in architecture school. So, I'm not going to tell you to read Vitruvius or Towards a New Architecture. They are obviously extremely historically significant books, however the point of this video is to encourage you to read what you find interesting in order to pursue your own definition of what architecture should be. Healthy Homes. This first book is all about natural light and ventilation in architecture, and how design can influence the well-being of a building's inhabitants. It's a subject area that really fascinates me, and the idea that architecture can influence its users' feelings and lifestyles is something that prompted my interest in architecture in the first place. Healthy Homes has everything you could want in an architecture book. Interesting ideas and approaches to design theory, a beautiful clean layout, and great full bleed photos of inspiring architecture worthy of any coffee table. Okay, book two is The Architecture of Happiness, written by acclaimed writer Alain de Botton. The Architecture of Happiness is an international bestseller and challenges what beauty is and means in architecture. Again, common theme, it discusses the influence architecture has on us and our feelings, and I think it's a really great, easy to digest book that can challenge how you think about architecture and spark lots of further conversation. Book 3, 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School. For book 3 we're going a bit more functional, it's something that I've recommended before and it's something I'll recommend again. 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School is a great little book full of 101 little tips, tricks and anecdotes that I think are invaluable to anybody going into architecture school. Unlike most books, you don't have to read page after page to get some value from this. You can literally pick it up when you have a moment's space with a cup of tea and glance at a page or two and take something useful away. Architectural education is is a long slog, and I think that's in part because it takes time to develop and mature as a designer. 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School is full of those little tips that you can't really be taught so much as you just have to discover, and so I found it really useful to have it lying around to reference and come back to every so often as I'm developing my own work. It's another one that's just great for the coffee table and I can't recommend it enough. Okay, so this is a bit of a rogue option here. The Little Book of Hugo isn't explicitly an architecture book at all. However, on reading it, I was really surprised and thought, actually, this really does apply to architecture. But also, from a lifestyle point of view, I think it's really worth reading about for everyone, but in particular, stressed out architecture students. So if you don't know, Hugo is a Danish word and is allegedly key to Denmark's reputation for being one of the happiest places to live. It doesn't directly translate, but means something along the lines of creating an atmosphere of coziness, wholesomeness, and generally being relaxed, especially with other people. How does this apply to architecture? Well, according to the book, Hugo involves all five of the senses, and whilst it's something Something that is ultimately an experience, it's something experienced within one person. Architecture is an experience too, and you can certainly design a space that is more or less hugely. In particular, the section on lighting is great. Um, I'm obsessed with lighting, I'll read you a tiny extract. Danes select lamps carefully and place them strategically to create soothing pools of light. It's an art form, a science, and an industry. Visit a student on a shoestring budget and you may still encounter a 1000 euro Werner Pantom lamp in the corner of her 32 square meter flat. I'm at about seven and a half square meters and I've got an angle poised type 90 that's about twice as old as I am. Certainly no pH 5, but anyway, great book. And since architecture is really stressful and all about balance of time and work, the balance that Hugo can add to your lifestyle is definitely worth reading about too, if nothing else. Finally, another one I talked about before, if you're a first year or you're going into architecture school, How to Read Buildings is a really great book to have. It lists all of the major architecture styles in great detail, like comparing how doors are built in different styles. It's both very thorough and very accessible. It's excellently illustrated and just very useful to have around to reference quickly. That concludes my architecture book recommendations. These have just been a few books that I've personally found really useful or really interesting. I think there are so many books out there though, the best thing you can do is read what interests you and just keep following your interests. If you want to buy any of these books, the links are all in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.